that's a true man. You know, a lot of men are afraid to be tender. A lot of men are afraid to be compassionate. There have been many times in my life where I've wanted to come across as very forceful and strong and have that strength of character that makes people say, he's a real man. But you know, the Bible says, put on tender feelings of mercy. Tenderness, compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Who is the man above all men? It's Jesus Christ. He is the man above all men. And you know what Jesus said? I want you to learn from me. I want you to learn from me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You know, it doesn't mean we just get stepped on. It means we're tender toward people. We're warm-hearted. When a person does fall, we don't sit there and say, well, you shouldn't have fallen. You have issues. <laughs> no, we run to their aid. We run to lift them up. That's what Jesus did. That's what the Father did. He ran, the Bible says. He ran to that prodigal son, and he held him. And the Bible says he kissed that son on his neck. He kissed him. Jesus is filled with that kind of tender mercy toward us. So Paul tells us feelings of tender mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and look at this, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against any, just as Christ forgave you, so you also do. So he gives the example of the perfect man Jesus Christ, and he says, look, here you are talking about Jesus Christ's forgiveness, you're talking about the cross, you're enjoying the cross of Christ, and the great and infinite forgiveness he has given to you, and so he says, think about that and forgive others. Because when we don't forgive, bitterness wells up in us, and anger, and judgment, and hypocrisy, and self-righteousness, and before long we're pointing the finger and saying, he is worse than I am. She is worse than she is. <laughs> well, I like this person better because of. And really what he's saying is, just as Christ has forgiven you, forgive one another. I guarantee you forgiveness will restore your business relationships. Forgiveness will restore your families. It will restore marriage. It will restore divisions in the church. It will restore divisions with in-laws. Lord knows there are a lot of those. <laughs> That's what forgiveness does. Notice what he says. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of completion or perfection. Put it on. What he's saying is, he, there are places in the scripture that talk about putting on Christ. It just means like a, like a cloak. Put on love. Just make it cover you. Because it's the bond of completion. It's that glue. Parascaleo is the word. It's like a glue, okay? And he says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. God's peace. How often do we experience turmoil as a result of a lack of forgiveness? You, you ask yourself the question. You just examine your life, and you examine the tension that's in your life, the turmoil, the strife, 99% of the time, it's going to find its root in some sort of lack of forgiveness. Either someone not forgiving you or you not forgiving someone else. But God's peace will rule in your heart when you put on love and when you forgive others as Christ has forgiven you. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. It's got to be victorious. To which you are also called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Basically what he's saying is, Read the Word of God. Read the Bible because it's got all this great news in it that teaches us how to be, have, have peace. And yet we sometimes wonder, what's my problem? Get back to the Bible, look at it, and it'll help you. I have to do that all the time. I have to do that all the time. Otherwise, I start drifting. Let it dwell on you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And everything, whatever you do, in 
in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And I always love to bring up the example of Charles Spurgeon, who was criticized for smoking a pipe. And Spurgeon said, the greatest preacher in, in England in the 1800s, and Spurgeon said, I will smoke my pipe to the glory of God. What he's saying is do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Now, am I encouraging you to smoke cigarettes? No, <laughs> because they're bad for you. But I don't think he had all that knowledge back then. But still, I think the case is, whatever you do, whether you eat, the Bible says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. This is great. There's so much freedom in that. You can play basketball. You can go to church. You know, you can have a glass of wine. Whatever the case is, you can do it all to the glory of God and rejoice in Him that He's forgiven you. That's freedom in Jesus Christ. Lastly, or I'm sorry, second to last, the Bible is our source for learning how to love God and to love one another. Second Timothy. This is a great passage. But continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from a babe you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Now I love this. All scripture is God-breathed. All scripture is God-breathed. God gave us this. And is profitable for doctrine, instruction, for reproof. When you read the Bible, it lets us know when we're not being loving to someone, doesn't it? It tells us. For correction, you read it, it shows you how to get on the right path. And instruction in righteousness. So that, what? The man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then finally, live in such a way that Christians and non-Christians see us as trustworthy, kind, sensitive, and make them want to learn from us and experience our love. Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a grain measure, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It makes sense. It makes sense when people see forgiveness, when they see tenderness in our lives, when they see gentleness and kindness and mercy, I don't think they're going to say, I don't want to hang around a person like that. <laughs> Most people desire kindness. That's what Proverbs says. The thing that is desired in a man is kindness. And so Jesus and Paul are simply telling us, look, as you have seen my kindness demonstrated to you, in my payment on the cross, my sacrifice, my suffering the penalty in your place for sin, all I'm asking is that you show that same love and kindness one toward another. Amen. All right. Let's sing. Let's stand up together as we sing this last song. Let's